Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. In the continuing revelations being made at the intersection of church and culture, President Trump said something very plainly Saturday at that Georgia rally in Valdosta. As plain, in fact, as the nose on your face. It's this simple point. Republicans and political conservatives in general are nice. And as a lady reminded him from the crowd, too nice. You know, when you think of it, the Republicans are much nicer. They're not nearly as vicious. Maybe a few of us. Republicans are too nice, he said. You're right. That's a very good, thank you very much. I like that. But they are, they're too nice. Likewise, in last week's public hearing on election fraud here in Michigan, Rudy Giuliani made the exact same point, that good people are too nice and have not realized just how mean bad people really are. Maybe sometimes we're too nice. Maybe sometimes we're too decent. Well, maybe we shouldn't change. But one thing we should have is we have the ability to defend ourselves and not let our people get kicked around the way those Republicans were kicked around. Well, hopefully that's a message that will resonate with political conservatives and enough Republican leaders before it's too late. But moving from that point straight into the faith, where there are often major overlaps in how all these affairs play out because we are always dealing with human nature. And at the end of the day, regardless of a given arena, too many faithful Catholics are just way too nice. For a variety of reasons, they simply let the evil in the church as well as in the world continue. Some weird, overly pietistic view of the second commandment to love your neighbor, they simply forsake all common sense and proper judgment. The idea that it is unchristlike to treat a person suspiciously or weigh their words against their actions and determine that they are lying is seen by too many as sinful or whatever. Living the Catholic life fully means oftentimes living in a state of tension, balancing two seemingly contradictory principles across a large spectrum of teaching. Deciding how to live and respond and conduct our affairs is why we need prudence. Going to one side or the other of a given proposition often leads to chaos. For example, when our blessed Lord instructed the apostles to go out and save the world, which is what his sacred command boiled down to, they flinched, understandably. You send us out as sheep among wolves, they said. A very correct first understanding, as many of us know and can testify. But here comes the balancing act response. Then be as cunning as the serpent and as peaceful as the dove. That may be the only time in human history that the alignment like that has ever been made, a serpent and a dove. Today, and maybe longer than most realize, this divine command is lived totally out of balance, way too much dove, nowhere near enough serpent. To have a personality that is suspicious of authority is seen as unholy or deficient or some such other degrading view. To regard someone telling you something that doesn't add up as a liar or dishonest or at least even inaccurate, well, that's frowned upon. No, we should not always give someone the benefit of the doubt. And to label that as Christ-like to do so and hide behind a soft spirituality is naive at best and destructive at worst. Would you give a convicted sex offender the benefit of doubt when looking for a babysitter? Would you give the keys to your car to an alcoholic who's on a drinking spree? There's absolutely nothing in the world, wrong, sinful, or immoral, about being suspicious of a leader, especially when the words and actions don't match up or a person or a family member, again, whose actions don't align with their words. Even someone coming off as holy and pretending to be about the faith and so forth. You have to consider, are they just self-promoters making a living off you, telling you what you want to hear? Are they advancing some personal agenda regarding schismatic groups, for example, deliberately withholding information from you that would undermine their cause or their argument? Are they just trying to expand their email list or increase their Patreon donations by saying what tickles your ear? Now, turning from laity to clergy, are the bishops being two-faced and malicious in reality when in public presenting themselves as concerned fathers? Yes, at the very first instance, a person should be given the benefit of the doubt. The very first instance. But when words and actions begin to veer apart, then 
yes, it's time to go from dove to full-on serpent. Remember, these sorts of people are very good at the sly, slithering serpent role, presenting themselves as doves, all the while planning to strike like a serpent. The wolf in sheep's clothing expression. Not for nothing do we have the expression, watch what he does, not what he says. Yet something in the personality of misguided spirituality of many faithful Catholics seems to preclude looking at the world and the people in it for what it truly is, which is fallen. Fallen mankind is capable of great evil, great deception, horrendous immorality. To walk through life as though that's not the case is to whistle past the graveyard, chalking up evil actions to some irrational excuse in the name of piety is to place your soul and perhaps even your body in danger. This is how wicked priests and bishops got away with raping thousands of altar boys and then using your money to pay off the lawsuits when they got caught, not to mention the attorney's fees. This is how they also got away with destroying the faith of tens of millions and counting in this country alone and hardly anyone uttering a peep. See, that wicked lot is perfect at following the counsel of our Lord, at least outwardly, be as cunning as the serpent and as peaceful as the dove. Cunning, they certainly are. Yet the only way they're able to be cunning is because too many faithful Catholics are willing to believe their hogwash, their outward show. Look at their actions. What do they do, not what they say? Their words are a deflection. Same with politicians, as well as supposedly reliable Catholic information sources. First ask yourself, in all cases, what skin does this fellow have in the game? For example, where does the funding come from? Is a politician supported by Wall Street or Soros or whatever? Is a Catholic apostolate or a media personality supported by schismatic groups or perhaps a few wealthy donors who pull the strings? Where did the money come from to begin the operation, whether it's a campaign or an for office or a Catholic venture? Did the politician or Catholic person put up his own money, making him personally invested? Is the politician or Catholic person or outfit personally profiting from their messaging? Or are they reinvesting that money back into their effort to better the world and humanity? It isn't sinful, immoral, or uncatholic to ask these kinds of questions, to wonder these things, especially if you start seeing a divergence, again, in words from actions. Faithful Catholics in the church and the world, like politics, need to ask a lot more questions and be a lot more suspicious-minded. Too many have been conditioned to feel that suspecting something bad is afoot or making judgments in the material order is a bad thing. Being suspicious of evil and making correct judgments about how it is, is how you get to heaven by avoiding the pitfalls. And that's not Church Militant saying that. It's Church Militant repeating what our blessed Lord said. Abandon this stupid anti-Catholic notion that nice wins the day. The word nice never once appears in sacred scripture. Being nice, in fact, is a sure ticket to hell. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.